Coming up next, we talk about animal welfare and the many stray homeless pets that are out there on our streets and how there are so many agencies and people in this community who want nothing more than to give them a safe, wonderful, loving home. That's next on Newsnight. A very special program plan for you this evening. What we're going to be doing is talking about animal welfare, and we're going to be talking about it from the um, facets of control and protection to adoption and, and shelters. And there are very few issues that engender such passion among people as, as pets, stray pets, animal welfare. And, and here joining us for the first portion of our program, we want to welcome Christine Fothery, who is with the, she's the Animal Control Manager for the Summit County Animal Control. Next, we have Karen Hackenberry, who is Executive Director of the Summit County Humane Society. And finally, we have Kathy Wood of CHAP. CHAP is Citizens for Humane Animal Practices. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Nice, Thank you. nice to have you here. But what I want to do is start with having each of you just give like a little infomercial about your particular agency, what you do. So, Christine, do you want to start? Yes. Uh, Summit County Animal Control overall protects uh, the citizens of Summit County from any stray animals, any dog bites, any kind of issues that people are having with stray animals, uh, cats and dogs. Um, we go out in the field and we uh, get the stray dogs or do bite reports or if there's an animal that would hurt like a child or be in a school or something of that nature we would um, take control of that and either pick up the dog or return them to their owner um, and then take the measures necessary to um, prosecute or you know file any charges against uh, the owners of the dogs. Okay, great. Karen? Humane Society. Well, Possibilities Humane Society of Greater Akron um, has a slightly different role we are the only animal welfare entity in Summit County that has the legal mandate to um, investigate, arrest, prosecute uh, for Ohio's animal cruelty laws. So if you live in Summit County, we are your animal cops. Okay, so, so the difference here, as it was explained to me by, I think it was your boss, is that the Humane Society protects animals from people versus the animal control, which protects people from animals. Correct. Okay. That's correct. We are charged with enforcing animal cruelty laws under the Ohio Revised Code. Okay, great. Kathy, yes. you are CHAP. Yes. And tell us what CHAP does. Uh, CHAP originally formed in 99 uh, during the heyday of Akron City Council wanting to institute a cat law, which became a cat leash law. Uh, basically that is the same law that was instituted for dogs and quite a few people got together we formed CHAP and for about four years we were a political group um, we since have changed our our policy pretty much and we're now a low-cost spay neuter program we also counsel people on pet care and also helping people with feral cat colonies so so the three of you while there are different aspects of of your particular agencies you do collaborate and work together tremendously very much yeah, so absolutely you have to you have to if you don't you're missing opportunities for animals to be helped okay and that's the whole goal of exactly. of what so much is going on exactly okay now the humane society that is the animal shelter correct we do have a shelter. It is located in Twinsburg Township on Darrell Road. But when most people think about Summit County's animal shelter, they're actually thinking about the county facility. Correct. We okay. have an animal control facility as well here okay. in Akron. Okay. So, but you're taking animals who maybe were not strays or abused. You're taking animals who could have been uh, a danger to society? Right. We pick up any stray dog that runs loose in Summit County. Um, and then they have their mandatory three-day hold period at our facility where we don't adopt them out, we hold them for the owner. If no one steps forward and becomes the owner or says they're the owner or knows the owner, then they go up for adoption at okay. our facility. And you don't you euthanize them after three days? Um, we have not euthanized a dog for space um, in probably five years. Great. So we're really fantastic with adoptions and redemptions on uh, dogs. Okay. How big a problem? Um, does this county and maybe other counties have with with stray animals stray pets homeless pets 
Big uh, problem? It's a nationwide program right. problem. Yes. Exactly. And it's come to the forefront in Akron quite a bit because I think the economy being so bad, uh, people were just so overwhelmed, they didn't know what to do. They were losing their homes, losing their jobs, uh, maybe they lost their benefits if they were unemployed. Mm -hmm. And so we started seeing more animals on the streets, being taken to the Summit County Animal Shelter for surrender. Uh, maybe they were left at the home and the Humane Society had to get involved and rescue the animals. Um, it's been a big problem, but it's just not locally, you know. Um, we're trying to get to, up to speed, like up west it's a little more under control because they've had mobile spay-neuter programs for a long time and now they're starting to do mobile adoption units. We're now starting to get into that in this area. A mobile adoption unit? Yes. What, what is that all about? It's a mobile van that will go to different stores or venues. A lot of times you'll see businesses who are, are very much involved, not just pet stores, but anybody who loves animals, they'll, they'll create space on a certain day to allow an adoption unit to come with adoptable dogs and cats. And you can see those animals. You can fill out an application. You can maybe put a deposit down. And then if you're cleared, if you're, if you're an adoptable person, adoptable home, then you can take home a new baby. So it's not a question of whether or not the pet is adoptable, it's whether or not the... the yes. Okay. Yes. How big, how big an issue is that? Well, you know, um, we try to find the best fit. Right. We, okay. um, we want every animal that's under our care, and our mission can be summed up in three words, really, rescue, heal, and adopt. And we adopted out over 1,300 animals, finding them new forever homes last year. And we, the adoption process is designed to have a conversation with the person to make sure that it is really the best fit for that person, their family, their home, and their new best friend. We want it to work right. Right. <laughs> for everybody for involved. For everybody right. involved, exactly. Right. Okay, Christine, how about you, you know your organization has has a more of a, a I don't want to say a problem, but it's it's a little bit more of a ticklish situation because if you get an animal, uh, it's because they could have possibly been a danger to someone. How do you know if that animal is adoptable? Uh, all the animals that come to our facility, we temperament test them. Um, but with how do you, strain, uh, I have to ask, how do you temperament a, a, uh, a test a pet? Well, we really focus on food aggression uh, because that's what, you know, every dog eats every day. And, you know, when you have children in the household, they're going to grab the dog. They're going to grab for the bowl. Um, same with any toys or bones that the dogs may have. Um, so we basically have a fake arm. And um, you kind of take the food away from the dog. Uh, so if the dog does attack, it's not your hand. Sure. Um, and same with the toys. You know, you offer them bones and different toys and then take them away from the dog to see, you know, how the dog reacts toward that in that kind of environment. Wow. So, yeah, it's, um, it's really good for the dogs. I mean, it really does when you have a family coming in, you have something to tell them. Um, but we always let everyone know just because the dog passed a temperament test, it's still a stray dog. We know nothing about their temperament right. or their history. Right. So, you know, you need to be very careful when dealing with stray animals, any animal. When, when either the Animal Control or the Humane Society gets an animal, um, do you naturally spay and neuter them? So this would bring Kathy into the conversation and the whole practice of, of humane animal practices, correct? I can answer that question myself. I went to the Summit County Animal Shelter just before the old shelter closed and I went down and adopted an eight-month-old German Shepherd puppy. Mm -hmm. And even though I am the coordinator of a mobile spay-neuter unit, I was not allowed to take her home until she was spayed at the county shelter. Okay, so, so all of you make sure yes. that any animal is spayed or neutered. Right. Yeah, that's right. absolutely correct. We actually um, opened our new medical surgical suite. I think it was a year in October. We have a vet on staff Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and any animal that goes out of our shelter is spayed and neutered. We're very committed to that as well. And we also temperament test. And like you, you know, there are never any guarantees. We also right. don't know the exact conditions of an animal's life before it came to us. But we have a licensed professional dog trainer and she's very skilled and we take them through their paces. We also have a grant that enables us to do basic behavior one and two training. And it's kind of basic manners and it's great for the dogs because it's the most human attention some of them have ever had. We have a large cadre of cat volunteers that come in and do nothing but socialize cats so that they're ready to be in a home with people. I'm curious about population numbers and, mm -hmm. and I want to ask in two respects. Um, since the, the, since CHAPS has been at work, have, have 
all of the professionals in this area seen a decrease in the number of animals because of spay and neutering programs? That's my first question. Not Summit County Animal Control. We have a pretty steady number of stray animals okay. every year. It's about the same, especially with cats. And what, what are those numbers like, Christine? Uh, about 5,000 animals a year. Really? We take in, yes. And, and most of them get adopted out? Um, dogs, yes. Um, a lot of our dogs, unfortunately, um, the stray cat problem in Summit County is, is bad, like everywhere else. Um, we do have a program called Rescue Wagon uh, with mm -hmm. the dogs. If the dogs don't get adopted here in Summit County, um, we send about 30 or so a month um, out of state on a Rescue Wagon program with PetSmart Charities um, okay. to get homes. But, but you talked about cats. Is there any idea, anybody have any numbers about how many stray cats there may in fact be in Summit County? Right now, Thousands? numbers, it, 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 for every dog known in Summit County, there's approximately 20 cats that are oh not known. Really? Okay, and then you have, and, and we sort of tried to figure this out back when the other director was at the shelter. We went by dog licensing, and, and uh, the average home approximately had one dog and two cats per household. Now, we're, we're talking that's like 1995, 1990 maybe. Um, and then you have the people like me who have multiples. I'm, I'm not the norm. I've got 14 cats and I've got two dogs. Uh, and the only reason I have 14 cats is because I used to be with a major rescue group here in Akron and I got what we would call the, the foster failures. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. They, they became handicapped or ill for the rest of their lives and they wouldn't be adopted out. But right now, it, you know, trying to count cats out on the streets is like trying to shovel smoke. Okay. All right. Impossibility. You know, it's it's impossible. When you figure there's four kittens per litter, a female cat mm -hmm. can have four litters a year easily, and in oh. her babies, by the time she's had her third litter, her first litter is having a litter. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're seeing them come into mobile, pregnant, halfway through pregnancy at four months. Oh my goodness. Well, so. I, I, I do want to continue our discussion because I've got several other questions I do want to ask all three of you. And I want to ask our viewers to, to watch our continued discussion on the extended edition of Newsnight at newsnightnite.net. For more Newsnight content, including extended discussions, full interviews, and the chance to speak your mind about the issues, join us online at newsnight.net. Welcome back to the second part of our program about animal welfare. We are joined now with Georgette Thomas from One of a Kind Pet Rescue. Georgette is, in fact, the Director of Advancement, Correct. Organization Advancement, and a friend of mine and a volunteer and a passionate advocate for all things pets and animals, Kathy Coker. And, and also we have a guest on our set, and that would be Tango, this beautiful little puppy who is just... Uh, in Georgette's lap for the time being. So welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Um, I want to start with you, Georgette. Tell us about One of a Kind Pet Rescue, please. One of a Kind Pet Rescue is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we rescue animals in imminent danger of euthanasia. That's our mission. We also believe that the public should be afforded a low-cost, sometimes no-cost spay and neuter clinic. And we have a second prong to our organization. And you have been in operation for how long? 2005. Okay, and you are located? We're located in the Wallhaven District of West Akron. Okay. Um, on average, how many pets do you have at One of a Kind Pet Rescue? Our cat population, cat and kitten population, is always going to be somewhere around 300. And as soon as we place animals, we go back out and get them, so we're always at full capacity. And then dogs are um, anywhere from 50 to 75, and some of that depends on our litters, how many litters we have, and how many puppies are in the litter. Do you, you have puppy, you have dogs that literally have litters at one of a kind? Mm -hmm. We get called routinely for pregnant moms that need a place to birth and to rest and birth, and we afford them the two months it takes for them to um, birth their babies, you know, uh, nurse them, get them vetted, and get them into homes. Um, at any given time, where do you get your pets? We always rescue, because we have a mission of rescuing animals in imminent danger of euthanasia, we always go into animal control facilities. Okay. And because we're located here in Summit County, Summit County Animal Control has priority. 
How closely do you work with the Humane Society or animal control? Is that, you know, because the thing that is, is amazing to me, and Kathy, you can jump in here too, is, is the collaboration among all of the different facets of animal welfare and animal control. So how often do you work with people from those areas? We work with them as often as they want to contact us for help and, and vice versa. You know, when we need help, we, can, we feel like they're only a phone call away too. Do you have pets at um, uh, one of a kind that are not adoptable? Never. Really? Never. Mm -mm. How, do you, how do you ensure that a pet that you get in is, is going to be a good fit for a home, though? We're kind of unique because we don't just go into animal control and pick out the most adoptable pets. They're going to place their own pets. Those adoptable pets, those designer dogs, those purebred dogs are going to go. They do a great job at that. You're often going to see a lot of 40-pound-plus dogs at one of a kind because routinely and statistically, those are the ones that get euthanized in animal control facilities through no fault of their own, but because they're just sometimes it, too no. long of a length of stay. Okay. But every pet you have is adoptable. They are. We, we have no time limit, and we ha we're no kill. And, and that was the next thing I wanted to ask you about, no kill. When did that come into uh, force with one of a kind? From the very, very beginning. We, there's always been a no kill philosophy. But do you ever have dogs that because they don't get adopted, I mean, give me an idea of how long maybe that the longest uh, resident at one of a kind has been there. Well, the one that comes to mind is Hank. Um, Hank was with us for over two years, came in emaciated, heartworm positive, food allergies, um, just a mess. And, and as we fixed one thing after another, he began to develop a personality. And then he, we learned that he had behavioral issues. You know, he started to feel better and he had an opinion about everything. <laughs> and we worked with him and we worked with him and we worked with him. And it took us over two years and we had to write on him in some of our local publications. And he got some attention. And we had a great family come out and adopt Hank. Accepted him for his good, bad, and evil. And he is in a home and successfully living just fine. We never give up on him. But do you, do you do a follow-up, I mean, with, with the adoptions to make sure that, that it is the fit that you hope it's going to be? We try to do that right up front with our matchmaker process, and we do deny adoptions. Or we will redirect. Somebody will come in and they want a puppy, but they're gone 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. It's not suitable for the puppy. Mm -hmm. um, the puppy's not going to be a trained dog by the time they're six months old, and they're going to be returned to shelter. So in a situation like that, we're going we're gonna to try to steer them toward a teenager or maybe a one-year-old. So right. we try to do the proper placement to begin with. Okay. Now, are there more and more pets available, or, or is it just my imagination that, that there are more strays, there are more homeless, there are more pets out there that need loving homes? I've been doing this 15 years total from a volunteer perspective and in this position, and every shelter that I've worked with, and I started with a foster program, and I went to the Humane Society for a period of time, and now one of a kind, everybody's at full capacity and has been for 15 years that I've been in it. The, the key is to spay and neuter animals. Okay. All right. And, and I'd like to ask, because in the first part of our program, we, we talked with, uh, with CHAP, uh, Citizens for Humane Animal Practices. So, so do you work with them, or do you have your own spay and neutering program? And how essential is a spay and neutering program? The spay and neutering program is, is, is key to us one day maybe never having to do this kind of work. And I think all of us would be happy if they could put us out of business. Um, we, we, that's bare minimum. When you get an animal through rescue, it needs to be spay and neutered so that it cannot go out there and reproduce. Um, bare, it's a big, big, big component to what we do at One of a Kind. Our spay and neuter clinic can do up to 70 animals a day. Wow. We've already done nearly 45,000 animals since we have cats and dogs since we have been in business since oh 2005. My. That's an awful lot. And, and excuse me, I stand corrected, since 2007 is when our clinic opened. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, so you, you mentioned a little bit ago your foster parent program. Tell us about the fostering that goes on with, with shelters. We need, we need our foster program. Um, ours is very, very small. It's slated to grow in 2013. Um, it, the foster, it's wonderful to get these animals into homes. They do so much better to acclimate to their then forever home if they're getting used to a home and a, and a home environment and they're on a schedule. So we love the, the idea of a foster program um, with so little human resources and because we're doing so much other work, um, you know, it's, it's something that we've been slow on the uptake with, but we are developing that program right now and it's huge. How many people do you have in your foster parent program? Right now, we have about 15, and these are going to be the people that we call if we have uh, uh, kittens that need bottle fed. 
or if we have dogs that need bottle fed or um, maybe sick, they're sick, and the, and the shelter environment is too stressful and it's not going to work for them. So it, it, fosters are important. I'll bet they are. Tell us a little bit about the funding for your organization. Where, in fact, do you get the funding for One of a Kind Pet Rescue? We are 100% privately funded. That means we appeal to the public on a regular basis and ask them to support what we do on behalf of animals. Um, it's a very, very difficult task. Everybody sees what you know our facility looks like. We look like we're well-funded, and we struggle just like every other organization in town. What kind of money are we talking? Can I ask you that? I mean, do you have a yearly budget? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. your annual budget is what? Our annual budget is just over $2 million. And most of that money comes from? Well, it comes from private donations, but you know, many people who have gotten familiar with One of a Kind would know that we have what we call some sub-businesses under one roof. Okay. So we have our retail operations as well as doggy daycare, um, grooming, and all of these services continue to support the, the rescue effort. The rescue effort. Kathy, I want to bring you in on the conversation yes. here. You are a volunteer I am. at Animal Control. Yes. Okay. Why Animal Control? Um, my husband's business moved to um, downtown Akron about a year ago. And um, everybody at the business decided that we would all go over and volunteer at lunchtime and walk dogs. And we started out one day a week. We had kind of a club on Wednesdays. We would go down and walk dogs. And then we all became totally addicted. And we go, <laughs> I go down sometimes three to four times a week. Um, my husband's employees volunteer walk dogs every day. Um, Animal Control does a great job. Um, all of the dogs need a walk. They, they really do need to get out of that cage. And it's such a nice facility because there are sidewalks on uh, both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of property around Animal Control and they have a large fenced in area to the right of the building where you can take a dog in and play ball and it, it's just a great way to to bond um, and it's a very fun volunteer job. Um, you you are a, a, a tremendous advocate for for uh, animals. Yes. If, if one of our viewers is out there looking for um, uh, to adopt a pet, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. How would you advise them what to look for? And I don't mean to leave you out of the conversation, Georgette, but, you know, from your perspective, Kathy, what should somebody look for if they go to adopt a pet? Um, I, I would go into the facility and give myself plenty of time. And I would walk around and see all of the dogs that are available. Mm -hmm. I would go in with an open mind because there are a lot of wonderful mixed breeds. There's a lot of wonderful mixes out there, so you don't want to overlook them. And maybe you don't want to go in with a preconceived idea that it, it's just a certain dog you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But go in, um, take your time, have some of the faculty take out maybe two or three of the dogs. They have a great area in the back where you can go back and play with that dog and see how well you bond with that dog. Um, I would go out and take him for a nice long walk Mm -hmm. I would take him over to the play area to the right of the building, play ball with him, mm -hmm. um, and you'll know fairly quickly what dog will bond, is going to bond with you. Georgette, how essential are volunteers like Kathy? Oh, and they're other, huge. What do they do for, for your organization? They take the place of paid staff. And, okay. and um, there's no way that we can offer the, nur the nurture, the, the mental nurturing that the volunteers are able to do because they have the time to do it. They're there to do that. Um, we're often just going through the task, you know, keeping, sticking to our agenda mm -hmm. to care for all these animals. So when the volunteers come in, we're grateful. And they, can, they just offer them such uh, mental nourishment, is what we call it. Well, and I have, to, I have to tell our viewers about Kathy and walking into her house the other day with this <laughs> box there, because volunteers sometimes think outside of the box. Kathy, tell us what you did um, just recently. Uh, just recently, I noticed the dogs needed some tennis balls for the mm -hmm. play area. Mm -hmm. um, I asked a neighbor. Uh, she contacted Springside Racquet Club. Mm -hmm. Springside Racquet Club donated a large box of tennis balls. Um, I took them down to animal control. I took some over to one of a kind for the play area. Um, the community is wonderful, but we do need those people to come down and walk. Uh, walk dogs, groom dogs, um, go out in the play area and play ball with some of the dogs that are high energy, mm -hmm. that just need to run off some of that energy. And there's also a great area where you can come in and play with the cat just hold him and nurture him. 
Because that's so important to their, so important. their well-being, obviously. Yes, yes. That, obviously, you do background checks, Georgette, on the, uh, the volunteers that you have. And, and why is that essential? We don't go to, go to an outside source to do a background check, but we do ask about any, um, any past indiscretions. And then, <laughs> and then we make a determination whether or not that person's appropriate for our organization. Somebody that maybe is involved in domestic abuse maybe wouldn't be the right, uh, right person to work with animals. Um, you know, so there are some reasons that we would maybe not choose somebody to work with our animals and in that environment. And everybody does get an interview, and, every, and we do have the right to refuse. Absolutely. I want to ask each of you um, oh, the same question I asked our guests from earlier on the program. What is it about, about pets, uh, homeless pets, any kind of pets, that, that seems to touch our hearts so much? Georgette? Well, there's such pets and people connect on so many levels, and the last thing that we want to do is think about a living, breathing, feeling little being out there on the streets with nowhere to go and cold and hungry and not being cared for by humanity, and they're completely dependent upon humanity. So it, it pulls out our heartstrings just like it would a child. Sure. Kathy? Oh, I guess I, I love the day that someone's adopted, and I see the right dog or cat go to the perfect family, where I see that little boy and girl that come in and they are so happy to get that dog. I mean, it just makes your day. It Absolutely. just makes your day. Georgette, if people want to know more about One of a Kind uh, Pet Rescue, um, how do they get in touch with you and, 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 and learn about what your facility does? We invite everybody in. Anybody that wants to know anything about us can have a personal interview with the organization, but they can contact contact us at 330-865-6200. They can go to our website and learn a whole lot about us. And we're located in the Wallhaven District of West Akron. So the website is? www.oneofakindpets.org. And, and Tango, the little puppy who we took off the set because she was crying a little bit, she is available for adoption. She is. Well, thank you both for being here. I certainly do appreciate it and for talking a little bit more about animal welfare and rescue. And thank you for joining us. All of the information on each of the people that we have spoken with and their respective organizations will be on our website at newsnight.net. Thank you. Good night.